critics of Bob Lazar and his audacious claims about alien craft being studied at Area 51 insist that there is no proof of him ever having worked at the top secret military facility. They suggest that his stories are simply made up. But a powerful new witness has come forward to corroborate Lazar's story, former Air Force pilot David Freehoff. It's only been for me personally in the last few years, and all of a sudden, Bob Lazar's statements and all the things he had said have gelled now to the point where I think he's very credible. While critics routinely claim that Lazar's supporters lack any credibility, they can hardly make that claim about Freehoff. Beale Air Force Base. 1967. U.S. Air Force Captain David Freehoff joins an elite group of pilots flying America's most sophisticated spy plane, the SR-71. I was an SR-71 pilot for four and a half years. The aircraft, as far as performance went, it was an hour from coast to coast. It would warp your mind with that kind of performance and you just felt so proud that you were, had an opportunity to, to fly that airplane and to be a part of that unit and those people. It was family. No one is surprised when the military assigns such an elite pilot to duties at America's most top secret Air Force Base. I worked at Area 51 for six years from 1979 to 1985. You had to have a special clearance, a top secret SBI, special background investigation. Fortunately, I had gotten that while I was flying the SR, so it was an easy transition for me to move from the SR-71 and my clearances and all over into Area 51. Along with his colleagues, Freehoff commuted each day from McCarran Airport in Las Vegas to Area 51 using a mysterious government carrier named Janet Airlines. One of the great stories about Area 51 comes from engineer T.D. Barnes. Here's what he said. If there are UFOs being reverse engineered at this base, I wouldn't know about it because you flew out in an airline, Janet Airlines, and the windows were blacked out, so you didn't know where you were going. Freehoff noticed that on his daily commutes, a select group of scientists and military personnel also boarded the Janet 737 in Las Vegas. When the plane landed at Area 51, this group boarded a bus and headed to an even more secretive facility codenamed Site 4, or S4. When I was there, we knew about S4, but we didn't know what they did. All we knew is there were certain people that got on the 737 in the morning and we got to Area 51, they would take and go off in a different direction in a bus, and then we went on to the north going up towards the hangars. Freehoff never knew exactly what was going on at Site 4 during his time at Area 51. But when he heard Bob Lazar's story years later, he found that Lazar's description of flying to Area 51 on a Janet 737 and traveling to S4 rang true in every detail. When I heard uh, Bob Lazar describe getting on the 737 and fly to Area 51 and get off and go through the terminal and go to uh, S4, and everything he talked about and the way he put it, uh, he sounded totally uh, believable to me. Critics contend that no actual eyewitnesses have ever come forward to confirm that Lazar worked at Area 51 much less at site four. But Freehoff claims otherwise. I know people that had worked for me that after I left there, they had seen Bob Lazar there, and they admitted that to me recently. I know that his critics piled on because obviously they did not want the word to come out that there were in fact uh, UFOs in our possession and that he was revealing a capability to perhaps our enemies that we in fact were alien technologies. 